So the legend, at least as told in the first century by the philosopher Plutarch, goes something like this. Theseus, the hero king of Athens, had a ship, which is known, fittingly, as the ship of Theseus. The people of Athens wanted to honor Theseus for killing the Minotaur, so they took care of his ship for him. Or maybe they did it as a reminder of the part of the story where his dad threw himself off a cliff. But that's really not pertinent to the ship, so we'll gloss over that. Anyway, in Plutarch's telling, over the course of a thousand years, the Athenians replace every plank of the ship, one by one, as they decay. The question that's been debated by philosophers since then is, is it still the ship of Theseus? And if not, at what point does it stop being the ship of Theseus? But I'm not here to tell stories about classical philosophy. The story I'm telling here is that I'm rebuilding a jeep that I pulled out of the woods. But if I've already replaced the frame, and I replaced the entire body, am I really rebuilding that jeep, or just building another jeep? So to tell this story, I don't think I can take the easy road and buy a new tub for this. I'm going to have to try to salvage as much of this as I can. I know I can buy all these patch panels, but while I'm doing things the hard way, you see up in the corner there where it says Jeremy makes things? It doesn't say Jeremy buys things. Might as well make as many of the patch panels as I can. You see, there are two ways to look at something like this. One is, the longer you look at it, the worse it gets. But the way I'm looking at it, this is a learning opportunity. A lot to learn on that one. Definitely going to do some skill expansion here. Learning opportunity, and might need some more tools. Learning opportunity. But actually, a lot of that is salvageable. Whole lot of learning going on here. Oh yeah, look at what I can learn there. So I've got my work cut out for me, but the only way to eat a Jeep is one piece at a time. I think I'm going to start on this front section. There's a bunch of these patch panels that are both spot welded and or riveted on. We'll get rid of those first and see what we're working with. One of the more satisfying solutions to the Ship of Theseus paradox is that the Ship of Theseus exists not just as a collection of wooden planks, but as the idea that there is a ship that changes to some extent over time. This won't be exactly the same jeep that I pulled out of the woods. Some parts of that probably fell off on the way home. But this will be the jeep that I rebuilt from the one I pulled out of the woods. I was hoping there was going to be something salvageable behind here. I'm going to be hammer forming these patch panels, so the first step is to take measurements of the wheel arch to make the hammer forms. And I did it on both sides just because they're kind of warped and I want to average everything out. Both sets of points get plotted up in CAD, and it turns out it makes a nice circle with about a 16 inch radius. From that I can draw up my forms and feed them to the CNC router. These are just like an MDF board salvaged from the bottom of a treadmill. I made two of these, they're offset a little bit, and that's so when you're hammering you can get in and hammer down onto that bottom one. Top one's to hold the metal in place. Radius both sides of the bottom one to match the body. Basically just flip this over, use both sides of it, make both panels. And because this wheel arch is actually an arc, I should be able to use this for all of the patch panels I have to do along the wheel arch. Need about a quarter inch flange around the bottom, about half an inch on the wheel well. I should say this is the first time I'm trying this. I've been watching a lot of videos from Carl Fisher's channel, Make It Custom. I'll leave a link in the description. It's really impressive to see what someone who knows what they're doing can do with very simple tools. But I hope there's some value in seeing someone trying it for the first time. So you can get an idea of what to expect if you decide to try it yourself. 
I feel like this Jeep is a pretty good vehicle for doing this for the first time because, well, so much of it is just flat. Keeping these panels flat when I weld them in might be a bit of a challenge, but at least making them is easy enough. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. So now the question becomes, what's actually straight here? So I measured down to kind of the break around that door, drew that line on there. I need to get some better grinding discs and do some more grinding on this and some hammer and dolly work, but I'm going to move on. Partly because as I was working, I was noticing some little pinholes opening up here. I thought I was into good metal here, but now that I look at the back side of it, it's really not. So, I'm going to cut out some more, keep going. Went ahead and got the rest of the patches in this side. It needs some more grinding and some hammering to straighten it out. But no joke, as this thing sits right now, the back corner is about two inches wider than it should be. But at this stage, before I try to straighten anything, I need to get some metal that I can straighten. I did most of this side off camera just because I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and I hope I'm getting better at it as I go. So I figured I'd show you the better work. Of course, since this form is made out of scrap, it's not long enough to do the whole thing in one shot. So as I'm starting to fit this patch in, I'm noticing that the side panel here is really kind of twisted out. And the wheelhouse is sort of sloping in instead of being flat across. And so if we look at the back here, we have the original beaded floor, and then it's been patched over. If we come underneath, it's just this big thick plate everywhere. You can look down in here, there's this huge gap, and it's just holding everything at the wrong angle. So I think it's time to get rid of some dead weight here. I kept the frame from the driver's seat in because it was adding some structure. 
But I think at this point it's doing more harm than good. bunch of measuring, tweaking around, then used some rusty bed frame and some chewing gum to add some more braces to this thing. It's still not exactly right and it's never going to be exactly right, but it's a lot less wrong than it was. In hindsight, I probably should have done that first, but the usual idea is to leave as much structure in as you can, but in this case the structure was really just causing more problems than it was solving. One other little problem area I've noticed is back here I've got some splits. It looks like this is kind of splayed out like that. And if you watch when I pull this back and forth, this piece wiggles back and forth. I think I want to kind of pull this in with a clamp. But before I do that, I think I want to try to... This is one of those cases where I think this has probably been stretched a little bit. So welding it back together, it's going to pull it back in. I don't really know what the right answer is here. Now I think I can just take a bar clamp like this. I think that's about straight. When I say about straight, I mean straight considering the amount of damage through here. Getting a good fit on these panels I think is where my inexperience is showing. It's worth spending time to get these to fit nicely because just as you weld it, the result comes out a lot nicer. And I've got a lot of this pretty good, but over here, I mean, I cut this three times and it's still too short. So I'll just have to make a little strip in there. I think I'll do that once this is tacked in. But before I do that, I have some more that I want to cut out. I just wanted to do this as a separate piece to save on the complexity of the shape. And before I do that, I need to rebuild the brace that goes behind it. So most of the sheet metal on here is 18 gauge, but this brace is 16 gauge. And I didn't have one piece that was big enough to do this brace, so kind of pieced it together, but it fits pretty well. Once it's together, you'll never see this side of the seam anyway. I also went ahead and pre-drilled holes for plug welding this to the skin. I'm doing weld through primer on any pieces that overlap to try to give it as much corrosion resistance as possible. I also want to do the other patch on this side at the same time. That will give me more room to skip around when I'm welding to try to keep things cool and minimize the distortion.
The game here is to just get everything lined up as well as possible before you tack it in. And then it's just lots of tack welds spread out to keep the heat down, cooling it off with the air hoses I go when needed. And the end result looks like a rabbit pooped all over it, but we all know the trope about a grinder and paint, but that's kind of the name of the game here. After a bit of grinding and sanding, I'm really happy with that. Um, there's some weirdness down here still. I don't think it's going to ever go away. I need to clean up along this edge some more, but I want to do that when it's upright and I can actually see it. Same thing back here. I want to wait to do some of this because I can hammer this out a little bit more once this wheel well is out. But overall, that's pretty good. Back on the passenger side, I wanted to do some heat shrinking to try to start straightening this panel out a little bit better. This will still need a bit more work, and it's probably going to move once I start putting the floors in, but it's better than it was. I also wasn't real happy with this radius on the corner. It's a little bit too small, and I fixed it on the other side before I put the panel in, but I'm just going to make another small little hammer form I can put in and try to get this a little bit closer to what it should be. Since I'm going to be bending this over more, I'm going to get rid of some of the material, so I'm not trying to bend over that metal that's already shrunk down. I got that cut back to about what it's supposed to be like. There's really not a whole lot of material there. Got rid of some of the parts that didn't shrink down very well. A lot happier with that now. The next thing I want to do is try to tackle this riser piece, and that'll tie the two sides together. I'm not even sure this thing's really attached anymore. This is one of those pieces that's going to be easier to do manually than to set up the CNC. And it's also good to show that you don't need a CNC router to do these things. On this one I opted to just screw through everything to keep it from moving around. We'll be simple enough to weld the holes up later.
I pre-drilled both ends for plug welds and gave the ends a coat of weld through primer. I thought I had this stage pretty well wrapped up, and then I remembered there's supposed to be a body mount hole here. And looking back through some of the pictures I found on the internet, there's actually supposed to be a reinforcement here. So I cut down my form and made one that slips right in there. We'll just get those plug welded in and call it good. Well, still got a long way to go on this but it doesn't feel nearly as insurmountable as it did. This is by no means great, but it's a lot better than it was. And as I keep working through this, I'm gonna keep tweaking it and trying to make it better. Try to get it as good as I can get it. It's never gonna be perfect. I think it will probably always look put back together, but that's okay because it is put back together. I think the next thing to do is gonna to be to de-flintstonify this and try to get some floors back in it. Since that's gonna involve a lot of bending these little tabs, I think that'll be easier if I have a sheet metal break. So if you want to see me make one of those, stick around. By the time I'm done with this, there'll probably be more new metal than old metal, but it will still be the same Jeep.